this week's episode of the Bid Ram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Uh, firstly, as always, a big thank you to everyone that watched uh, last week's episode of the show, everyone that commented, um, and uh, um, to those of you that have, have continued to support us by purchasing through the website, like I said last week, we are still in business. Um, and processing orders online so uh, if your whiskey cupboard is getting a little bit bare then um, then just pop over to, to uh, gauntness.com and um, yeah well you know pick up uh, pick up a good bottle anyway um, so uh, before we start a uh, quick quick plug for the whiskey magazine um, no I'm not being paid to do this I'm, but th th this uh, current issue of the whiskey magazine has obviously got the results of the World Whiskey Awards in, and as you may or may not know, Hakushu 25 was World Whiskey of the Year, not that you can buy it anywhere probably. I mean, it's funny, isn't it, how Beam Suntory a few years ago basically said, we're pulling all our age statements, uh, just like all the, all the rest of the Japanese distillers, and um, yet they're still cropping up. I mean, I see Facebook's paid Im images of, of people around the world saying, look at this, all of the age, you think, what? Anyway, um, yeah, one one wonders whether it's actually a cynical marketing ploy, you know. Um, yeah. Anyway, enough of that. Not here to comment on the, on that kind of thing. But what I am here to comment on, obviously, is a selection of uh, of, of whiskies. Um, uh, funny that. Um, anyway, so uh, today's episode of the show features uh, the uh, whiskies uh, of uh, Lady of the Glen, which is the sort of label uh, of the, uh, the Hannah uh, whiskey merchants. And um, I've kind of come across them every now and again, generally when I was judging the Independent Bottlers Challenge, which I, I tend to do most years. And um, yeah, I, I guess they're like any other independent bottling company, there have been some really impressive ones and maybe some not quite so impressive ones, but like I said, I've never had the opportunity to taste them all together. Um, and um, so, you know, it's going to be quite interesting. Um, as, a, as an aside, um, uh, today's episode of the show is dedicated to a Facebook friend of mine called Paul uh, McKendrick. Um, no, no, he's not dead. Um, <laughs> he's apparently just literally this moment taken up a new role as brand ambassador with um, Lady of the Glen and because he's furlonged he hasn't had the opportunity to taste them. So here is a completely unbiased review of some of the whiskies you'll be trying to sell. Um, and of course obviously it's an unbiased review to all you guys that uh, actually uh, watch the show because at the moment obviously I don't stock their whiskies. This was the reason uh, Grace uh, kindly sent me a number of samples to have a look at and obviously because of the whole coronavirus it thing you know it's kind of put everything on hold to be honest with you so but I thought it would be really nice just to kind of share them with you guys and um, just to basically say that all of these bottlings are available on the Lady of the Glen website so if any of them sound like your kind of thing uh, I'll obviously as as I taste them I'll, I'll inform you about how much of your hard-earned pence that they will cost you um, but like I said if any of them sound really intriguing to you uh, then obviously uh, just pop over to their website now the uh, the company uh, Hannah Whiskey Merchants was founded in 2012 by some chap called uh, Gregor Hanna. Now I don't really know too much about him but what I have uh, discerned was that his father was uh, a piper in the army and was given bottles of whiskey as gifts for doing piping um, and um, he didn't say whether, whether his father drunk them but I imagine being a Good Scotsman, he probably did, um, and I imagine that uh, apparently Gregor was fascinated by all these bottles and probably so fascinated that one or two may well have disappeared. Possibly, <laughs> um, anyway, uh, to not to sort of bore you to death about uh, the, the company itself, apparently he bought a couple of ca casks, uh, realized he needed various licenses and what have you to actually bottle them, and subsequently bottled them. So, uh, and has carried on doing so since. I mean, it's always, I think it's always interesting to, to know how independent bottling companies um, originate. I mean, you know, there's all manner of different ways they either start off as, as one person collection or a, or a gathering of uh, people's collections and they uh, start like that and some just purely start because you know 
they want to do it and they just go right how do we do this let's just go and buy some casks of whiskey you know and uh, um, there, there's all manner of ways that uh, uh, bottling companies start up and um, you know it's uh, it's nice to have the sort of the diversity and then it goes to show that the independent sector is still alive and kicking and uh, you know uh, there was a, a mention a few years ago certainly um, just after the credit crunch uh, bemoaning the demise of the independent sector saying that you know distilleries wouldn't be selling their casks anymore and all this kind of stuff but you know they were wrong in that case I mean because at the end of the day it's all like I've said on, on numerous occasions you know distilleries factor that into you know their their cash flow equations you know selling casks is a profitable business and unless you are that sort of distillery that maybe doesn't produce a huge amount of stock um, and therefore you know you want to hang on to it if you're the sort you know, other distilleries you know produce quite a considerable amount and, and it's like I said it's part of their cash flow and it's you know it's ready money at the end of the day you've got a nice cask of whiskey you know blog it to um, either an independent directly or to a broker um, but anyway I think that's a that's enough of me waffling for, for, for now. Uh, I think you really want to know what I'm going to be tasting. Right, okay, so as I said, uh, a really big thank you to uh, Lady of the Glen or uh, Hannah Whiskey Merchants for sending these samples. Uh, we're going to kick off with um, an American oak aged uh, or bourbon cask, uh, Blair Athol. Um, it is a 14 year old. It was distilled in October of 2004 bottled in October of 2019 at 58.6%. It's a single cask and the cask number is 3657. Now I, I do like Blair Athol and I always enjoy seeing it sans sherry shall we say um, because I love the character of Blair Athol. Nice sort of full sort of slightly meaty rich uh, style and um, uh, although they say it all really works well with sherry which I suppose to a certain extent it does um, as you well know I like to know I like to like the character you know like a bit of character in my whiskey um, second bottle we'll be looking at is uh, a the, the first of two finished whiskies this is a Glenlackie 13 year old which has been finished in ex masala casks uh, it was distilled in again in October 2005 bottled in uh, June of 2019 at the not inconsiderable um, alcoholic strength of 65.1 bloody hell um, I mean that's pretty much I would imagine close to their filling strength I would have thought um, so either that was matured in an incredibly hot warehouse um, and maybe the, the cask was as tight as a natch gel um, but that's going to be interesting. Uh, the next bottling we'll be looking at, like I said, is another finished uh, whiskey. This time it is a 15 year old Glen Elgin finished in X20 port casks. Uh, it was uh, distilled in March of 2004, bottled in January this year at 56.7%. The cask was 801297. Yeah, and Nice colour, it has to, has to be said. And again, I like Glen Elgin. It's another one of those classic distilleries that, that, that teams up, you know, worm tubs with, you know, slow distillation, hot water in, in the tubs to sort of get that really nice balance between um, floral sort of fruitiness and, you know, rich uh, meatiness. And um, I've always thought that uh, they've, they've got, generally speaking, Glen Elgin, the balance absolutely spot on. So, is it going to be hammered by the tawny cask finish? You know, that's always a question, you know, when you think, you know, lovely whiskey. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we shall indeed find out. Um, the next bottle we'll be looking at is a grain with a bit of age. This is a 26-year-old North British. Uh, it was distilled in May of 91, bottled in July of 2000. 2017 at 49.2%. It's a single bourbon hoggy, uh, number 200308. And unfortunately, we're not finishing with a bit of peat today, but we are going to finish with an Isla. This is a Bonnerhaben. Look at the colour of that, will you? No, I don't think you need me to tell you what that has been matured in. Um, I think it's blatantly obvious. Uh, it is indeed a Sherry Hoggy, uh, number 901203. It's nine years old. 
nine years in a sherry hoggy and I would imagine a fresh sherry hoggy um, uh, it's distilled in November of 2010 bottled in January of this year 66.7% again pretty much close to filling uh, ABV I would have thought so yet another tight cask and um, just the colour of that I mean well, I'm not going to make any judgments. <laughs> um, anyway, we will get there uh, in due course. So, there you go. That's uh, this afternoon's uh, lineup. Let's kick off with uh, a bit of Blair Athol then. So right, okay. So, let's see what the nose gives us. Yep, it's dense, it's waxy, it's floral. White rose, pear, peach, white peach, um, apricot, barley. Some lovely honeyed notes as well, and that's what I tend to find with with Blair Athol. It it just has a gorgeous character. It's a beautiful whiskey, and yet you know Diageo in their infinite wisdom says, Ooh, "Let's stomp all over this character with the sherry." Um, I mean, it's got some lovely darker wood spices coming through, a little darker honey note as well. I mean, now on the, uh, 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 the the Lady of the Glen website, this is 80 quid, and yes, that is a fair amount of money, And but it's about par for the course now for a, a car strength 14-year-old, um, or mid, you know, early to mid-teens bottling. Um, and that's a lovely nose. That really is absolutely delightful. It is just... Just classic um, Blair Athol. Um, see what passes. Like. Again, full, waxy, slightly oily. Apricots, barley, touch of honey. The alcohol is, is masking the finish, but there's a little bit of American oak coming through, a little bit of, of vanilla, a little bit of citrus, white fruit, mmm, mmm, touch of spice as well, and, and a little bit of almost kind of juicy tangerine right on the aftertaste. I mean, that is a lovely whiskey, lovely progression. Um, don't feel it really needs any water. I mean, like I said, the palate is a little bit masked, so I'm going to just pop a little bit of water in just to see see if that kind of lengthens it, brings out the fruit. And as I expected, it has indeed done that. It is, well, well, it's not lengthened because I haven't tasted it yet, but it's, it's brought out the fruit. Uh, it's emphasised the waxy fruit. There's a little bit more, a little bit more citrus now and a touch of, of caster sugar. It's got that sort of, you know, little dusting of, of, of sugar on the citric notes. Um, again, still quite full, uh, quite barleyed. Oh, just, just a mm, lovely nose, it has to be said. So we pass on now. Mm, yeah, that's really brought out the citrus. Mouth-watering, juicy, mm, lovely fruity finish. It's also brought out the oak a little bit more as well. But that is really harmonious. Quite malty as well, chewy, but not in a sort of overtly dense manner. Again, it's got the waxy fruit. Mm, you know what? That is absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so let's move on to the second bottling. This is the uh, Masala finished uh, Glen Alaki. Let's see what the nose gives us on this. Oh, that's a big boy. That's big, biscuity. Um, that just screams Masala at me. It dried fruit, um, toasted nuts, a little bit of grape. I ain't getting any distillery character out of this at all. I mean, one could say that Glen Alaki's character is a touch on the hard side, so um, maybe that's not a huge issue. There's a lot of a lot of toffee, 
Um, I mean, it's a real wood fest. I mean, it is primarily about the, the finishing cask. It's spent too long, personally, uh, in the cask. Um, and I'm, I'm getting no, no nuance. Uh, I'm getting just wood, you know. Um, now, on the... Uh, on, on the, uh, the, the the Lady Glen website, this is 97 quid. Yeah, I'm. I can understand why it's a bit more expensive because it's been finished in an ex masala cast. But anyway, let's see what the power's like. Yes, you can feel the alcohol. Mm. Um, really biscuity, dry, tannic, dusty, um, slightly spicy, very nutty. Again, it's all about the finishing cask. Um, there's a bit of sweet wood spice, but again, no barley, no distillery character, no nothing other than the masala cask. Um, let's put a little drop of water with it and see whether that knocks back the um, the cask, uh, the finishing cask character and, and see if we can get some distillery character. Mm, no. Um, it's a little less raw, it's a little less intense, um, but it's still just, just masala. I mean, you know, uh, and you know me and my balance, um, this just really is skewed all towards the cask and uh, it's clean. It's 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 a pleasant whiskey. It's if you like that kind of whiskey, um, then absolutely fine. But I just want more balance. And certainly, if I'm shelling out ninety odd pounds for a bottle of whiskey, you know, I want I want not necessarily fireworks, but you know, I want mm, you know. Um, let's see what the right now. Pretty much the same as the note, nutty, whiny, lots of, all the cask, a little bit of white chocolate. Um, I mean, quality wise, I no issues with the quality whatsoever. Um, but I wouldn't stick my hand in my pocket and pay 90 odd quid for that because, like I said, it has no balance, no light and shade, there's no, no distillery character. Um, so for me, yeah, it's a, a bit of a thumbs down, I'm afraid. Right, okay, so let's move on to the Glen Elgin. Uh, this has been finished in ex tawny port casks, or cask, I should say. Deep, waxy, malty, barleyed, but noticeably a better balance than the uh, masala cask. Um, the tawny fruits are just coming through. Uh, a little bit of sweet red fruit, sweet dried red fruit, but there's plenty of distillery character. It's got that honeyed, barley, waxy, slightly white fruit character. There's a little bit of marzipan, little nettly note, a little bit of malt biscuits. Um, that is that's that's lovely. That is how you do a finish. Um, it's augmenting the the character of the whiskey rather than just basically flattening the whole thing and um yeah that is lovely i mean it just it's just nuanced um it's subtle um and you know elegant and it's lovely i mean like i say i love glen elgin i think glen elgin is a wonderfully underappreciated distillery it has to be said um and uh you know this is just absolutely gorgeous and 83 quid now again i think you know i i, I got no qu no quibbles with that whatsoever um i think that's really well priced um so that's like
chewy, malty, little bit more pork character on the palate, little bit more almost raisinated red and black fruit. Finished is really quite masked. There's a little bitterness, a little bit of tannin uh, on the finish. Um, that it is kind of a little bit sort of one-dimensional-ish, but I think that's probably more to do with, and that's actually quite a surprise because you know it's only 56%, and I wasn't expecting the alcohol to be quite as masking. Um, so we're going to put a little drop of water with it and. Uh, Let's see whether that uh, opens things out, and uh, I hope it does. Oh yes, now that's more Glenelden character coming through now. It's got more slightly estery white fruit. Um, the port is, is distinctly pushed into the background. Um, there's some lovely honeyed notes. Um, barley, waxy fruit. Oh, that's a lovely nose, absolutely gorgeous. Um, the only negative point, and, and to me it's not a negative point, because I don't mind that slightly bubblegummy kind of white fruit note. I know some people sort of think of it as, as confected and they, they don't really like that. To me, don't mind it at all. Um, I quite like it in actual fact, and this is... This is the wonderful thing about whiskey is that, you know, things that I may like, you may dislike and, and, and vice versa. And, and, and like I said, at the end of the day, um, nobody's right, nobody's wrong. You can, you can sort of critique a whiskey for the quality, um, but at the end of the day, it's all about, you know, the individual personal taste. And, oh, I like this. This is a lovely whiskey. Let's see what the palate's like. Like the nose, more distillery character. Little bit tannic still on the finish, not as bitter, um, slightly dusty, a little bit more spice now on, on the finish. Um, cinnamon, um, again, I'm getting a lot more distillery character, a lot more of that sort of, you know, full waxy fruit, uh, slightly estery fruit. Again, a little bit bubble gummy. Um, but the sort of the, the port kind of almost sort of offsets that and gives it a little bit of grip, a um, little bit of spice, a little bit of red fruit. I mean, that that is how you do a finish. That is absolutely stunning. I I really like that. That's good. <laughs> So let's move on to the grain. Uh, so this is the 26 year old North British. Now as you well know I do enjoy a bit of grain. Um, very underappreciated I think and um, oh that's grainy. I mean that is that leaves you in absolutely no doubt that it is a grain whiskey. Uh, it is um, full of grainy dried fruit, vanilla, chard oak, coconut, touch of peanut um, it's not hugely complex and, and you know grain whiskies generally speaking never are overtly complex um, and they certainly gain complexity with some serious aging but then the complexity has a tendency to come from the wood character and you know this is a good age for a grain um, it's still got a slight sort of, say, youthful kind of edge to it. Um, but, you know, it's pretty much textbook. It's a hundred quid, you know, for, uh, you know, a 26-year-old spirit is, well, pretty damn good value, I think. Um, and and this is this is the thing I keep going on about to, to customers, with, you know, with regards to grain whiskies. You know, you getting a lot of age for your money. Um, and... Um, Yes, all right, we all know that sort of grain whiskey really don't tend to come into their own until they're in their 20s, um, generally speaking. So, you know, it's... Yeah, but this is just, it, it's a grain whiskey, and it just basically says grain... Let's see what passes on.
creamy dried fruit, vanilla, coconut, peanut, a little bit of almond. Lovely length, has to be said. Um, little grippy tannin note right in the finish. It's, it, it's a lovely grain. I mean, it's not hugely complex, uh, like I said, but it really does sort of say, I'm a grain whiskey and I've got lots of depth and it's not overly oaky. I mean, the thing with obviously grain whiskies, they can sometimes be overly, overly vanilla, overly coconutty, over, uh, overly sort of um, oak dominated because the spirit tends to be obviously of a lighter character. But you know what? I think that's really well balanced and um, I think that's certainly worth its price tag. Yeah, Right, okay, so moving on to the Boona. Um, so this is nine years old and 60 odd, 66, 60, 66.7%. Oh, um, let's see what the note goes. Now, would you be surprised if I said it's raw, it's oloroso, it's treacle, it's tar, it's burnt nuts, walnut. Raisinated fruits, it's not a hint of Buddha Harbin floral character in sight whatsoever. It is a sherry monster. It is, it's just sherry. It's Oloroso. It's a nine year old Oloroso monster and it's 122 quid. Why? Why is this £122? I mean, you know, I, I'm sorry, um, you know, I, I, I'd look at this and I, would, I, and I would go, okay, it's got to be bloody good if you want me to part with £122. Quid. And it's a nine-year-old, for God's sake. Why is it so expensive? Yes, sherry casts are more expensive than American oak casts. Bunnerhaben sort of does have a premium price tag attached to it, but certainly nowhere near the sort of premium that you'd pay for, say, Bamor or uh, Brocladi. Um, why? I, I don't get it. I don't understand why this is 122 quid. It is an unadulterated, one-dimensional sherry monster, uh, and frankly, the spirit could have come from absolutely anywhere on the planet. Um, it's really herbal. It is really sherried. I mean, it is unbelievable. Palette. Damn that is alcoholic. Damn that is sherried. I mean, I mean, it is sucking the moisture out of my cheeks. It has to be said. I mean, it is dried fruit. It's coffee. It's tannin. It's chocolate. It's tar. I mean, treacle, burnt thyme. Um, but then suddenly you get this kind of wave of kind of a fresh. American oak vanilla. Um, I mean, it really is toasty. I mean, seriously, seriously toasty. I mean, see, you know, this is obviously uh, an American oak hogshead which has been seasoned with sherry. I mean, because this is just, it's just wood overload. I mean, it is just character, distillery character. Um, where the hell is that? No, nowhere to be seen. I mean, that is just buried under all this oak. Uh, and it is just, it is so, well, it's not totally one dimensional because like I said, you get the sherry character, you get the American oak character, but it's kind of like, well, well, it's oak. It's what, what, where is the interest in that? You know, um, well, it's oak and alcohol basically. Um, and, um, you know, I, 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 you know, I don't wish to sort of denigrate anybody's um, products, but you know, this is just, just it isn't worth 122 quid in my my honest opinion. Um, 
no real change. Water just brings forward the raisinated fruit. It's got a kind of um, graininess to it, I guess. Um, but it's certainly not lessened the impact of the sherry. I mean, it is pretty much still an utter sherry monster. Um, sort of pass up. pretty much the same really quite it's a little bit more bitter now it has to be said um, blemish free I will add there's no sulfur it's as clean as an absolute whistle um, but like I've said on on numerous occasions if I wanted to have sherry I would go and drink sherry because that's all I can taste I, there's no distillery character there's no nothing there it's all sherry cask and I may as well just go off and have an Ola Rosso sherry if I wanted this kind of character you know um, and you know like I said I'm not sort of being um, I'm just being that you know you know what I'm like when it comes to sort of sherry cask you know it's got to have balance and nuance and unfortunately that has absolutely none of that Right, okay, so that's some today's episode of the show. Firstly, big, big thank you to Lady of the Glen uh, uh, for sending me the samples for today's episode of the show. Um, well, <laughs> yeah, it's my honest opinion at the end of the day. I mean, I loved, I loved the, the, the Blair Apple. Absolutely gorgeous whiskey. Uh, classic American oak age Blair Apple. You don't see it very often and, you know, hmm, absolutely spot on. Um, the uh, Glen Lackey Masala finish, um, not my, my cup of tea at all, to be honest with you. I mean, it was just all about the Masala cask. And to me, not it's just not what I want. Not what I want in the whiskey at all. And, you know, um, if I'm, as you well know, if I'm going to put a whiskey on the shelf, then it really has to be spot on you know no compromises i don't do compromise it's not in my vocabulary um the uh the glen elgin tawny pork finish now that was absolutely gorgeous now that was how you do a finish it was subtle it was nuanced it was it had balance between the distillery character and the finish and that is that's all, all i want i don't I, I'm a simple kind of person. I like the simple things in life, you know, and, um, anyway, so, uh, on to the North British. Yep, that was a lovely grain. I thought that was, um, pretty much good value for money. Like I said, you know, um, not as mature, generally speaking, as some, uh, grains I've tasted of that age, but, you know, it pretty much did what it said on the tin, you know, plenty of grainy fruit, dried fruit some some balanced oak again some some grains can be tend to be overly oaky I thought that was actually really quite quite pleasant um, and um, yeah I think that was certainly worth it the booner um, well I don't think I really need to sort of <laughs> go into any any more detail about that particular bottling I thought um, 122 quid uh, you're having a bit of a laugh really at the end of the day um, and I'm, I'm, I do apologise if I'm being a bit a bit rude there, but you know that's nowhere near worth 122 quid of, of, of my money or anybody's money. Um, you know, it's nine years old for God's sake. It has no character aside from sherry character, um, and you know I, I really cannot see why it has that price tag. But then I'm not running the company, so uh, anyway. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the show. I mean, may I, I would like to think that uh, once we're over all this coronavirus madness, uh, these will, or at least a couple of these will be on the shelf. Um, and certainly, uh, I think the, the ones that I really, really enjoyed are certainly worth it. So, um, all I can say is uh, until next week, uh, good running and good afternoon. <laughs>